Hi, I'm Taria Brooks at At Home Pixels, and today we're going to be talking about my top six tips when you're starting an Etsy store. So let's get started. Okay, so you want to start an Etsy store. It's super exciting, or maybe you already have one and sales are kind of eh. So uh, I'm going to be talking about my top six tips of what I have done in my Etsy shops in the past. So I've actually owned multiple Etsy shops. I have one that is doing really well and I've had others in the past as well that I just haven't put the focus onto it because my one vinyl business has done really well. So that's, that's my main focus. Um, so I've, as I've started lots of Etsy stores, I know what works. I know how to bring the customers in and how to get those sales. So here we go. So in starting an Etsy store, you wanna get off on the right foot. You wanna make sure that you're doing everything right so that you can get the views on your listings and therefore get the sales and start making some money. So I've actually used all of these six tips in my Etsy stores that I've had in the past. And I currently have one Etsy store that has done pretty good. And um, I've also been on Etsy since 2014. So um, I kind of know my way around that place. Uh, Etsy is a great place to begin an online business and to make some money. So let's get you started off on the right foot. And here we go with tip number one. So tip number one is you wanna make sure that your store looks stocked. In other words, I would recommend having at least 20 or more listings when you begin. Um, when a customer is searching for products, especially within your niche, um, they're going to be more likely to find your products if you have more than one. And then also if they end up browsing around on their shop, if they see that you have one listing, they may be like, oh, I don't know about this shop. It doesn't look like they have much to offer. Um, you know, maybe they aren't established and that might scare them off. So if you only have a few products, uh, there is a way to kind of stretch that. So let's say you sell, um, maybe four or five t-shirt designs. You can stretch your amount of listings by offering one listing in a red shirt, one listing in a green shirt, one listing in a blue shirt. Even though they're the same design, they can be stretched to be multiple listings, um, which will help make your shop look a little bit more stocked and full. Um, with my Etsy shop this year, I started out um, in 2019 with, um, I think there was like 230 listings. Um, and I was still doing pretty decent, but I had a goal that I wanted to get a lot higher than that. And so um, this year I've actually been able to grow just by increasing my listings from 230 to over 600 and that has been amazing and has really 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 helped my shop because uh, people are list looking for specific items and if I have that specific item then I'm more likely to make that sell. So um, definitely want to get as many listings as you possibly can on your shop and to stock that and make that look good. Okay so my second tip on Etsy is to make your listings look pretty. Um, this is probably one of the most important tips that I can give you is that you want to make it look legit and a uh, very good quality so that you can ensure that trust in that customer that you're offering a quality product. You want to make sure that the product, uh, if it's an actual physical product, that it's really well lit. Um, that you have multiple angles, show how it's being used, show it styled, show it by itself, show close-ups. Um, but keep in mind that only one image will be used for your listing image. So you'll wanna make sure that that looks really good. A good idea is to search similar items of other people that are selling, how they're photographing their images for their products um, to make it look good and professional and attractive because Etsy uses their search engine like a photo grid. When you, when you search for something, you come up with a photo grid of products. And so obviously you're gonna want your photo to look real good that can encourage those clicks and bring the sales. 
Okay, tip number three I have is competitive pricing. Um, and this is where it gets kind of a little bit tricky, but you'll want to make sure that you're obviously making a profit. Keep in mind how much your costs are for your product, um, the time it takes for you to create that product, any other costs that you may foresee. You'll want to make sure that your pricing is competitive to other sellers. So you don't want to completely lowball the market and your product is the cheapest one out there. And this is the reason why, is because someone's gonna see, um, let's say it's a wedding invitation printable. So let's say uh, this person is selling it for $7. And you're thinking, well, I can do that and I'll sell it for $2. The person that's selling it for $7 will probably be more likely to get the sale. And the reason why is because the customer is going to have trust in that $7 product and know that it's going to be a good product and a nice one and good quality over the $2 product. Even though you may have better or the same quality as the $7 product uh, shop, they're gonna want something that they can trust. Uh, quite a few years ago, I started a custom invitation Etsy shop and I sold birthday invitations and, and things like that. And I started my prices really low and I, I didn't really get a lot of sales. And um, so I wanted to do a little experiment. And so I actually increased my prices quite a bit, almost double actually. And I started getting a lot more sales once I increased the prices. So look around on Etsy, look at other Etsy shops, see what other people that are selling similar items are selling their stuff for and find your happy middle. Something that is gonna make you profit, um, but also be competitive and not too low or not too high. Um, and then when you get to the point where you're selling a lot of that product, yeah, raise that price. People are buying those, you need to raise those prices so that um, you're being compensated for your popular product. Okay, so my next tip, tip number four, is to have five-star feedback. Um, this is super crucial when you are starting because when people are doing an Etsy search, what they see in those search results is they're gonna see their listing photo, which we've already talked about. They're gonna see the name of the product and then they're gonna see the, the average feedback star with how many they've received. So in other words, they're gonna see um, that I have a five-star feedback and 3,000 reviews or whatever it is. In the beginning, this is really important to get five-star feedback. So you'll wanna make sure that you're doing everything that you can to provide a quality product. And then um, once a product has been delivered, whether digitally or physically, you'll wanna follow up with that customer and ask them, hey, how did you like this product? Would you please give me a five-star feedback? I'd really appreciate it. I'm a growing shop and every feedback is really important to me. Um, something along those lines. Also, uh, I always put in every single one of my instruction sheets on my vinyl decal business um, in the shipping box to, I encourage them to leave five star feedback. I say on my instruction sheet towards the bottom, I say, hey, um, I'd really appreciate a five star review. If there's anything that has happened with this uh, transaction that is not up to your expectations, please let me know so that I can get it fixed. Um, please leave a five star review. Something along those lines. Um, and then that way that can encourage the customer that um, that's really important to you. Um, and then if you aren't getting five star feedback, you need to uh, take that feedback and improve your product so that you can because that's gonna be really important, um, especially when those customers are seeing those search results and seeing those reviews. They're definitely gonna be uh, more apt to choose a product that has five star reviews um, or close to five star reviews versus something that has like one or two. Okay, so tip number five kind of goes along with tip number four, and that is to be number one in customer service. You are a business. You are serving your customers, and those customers are paying you their money for your product, which is pretty cool. But you'll want to make sure that you're not only delivering a really good product, but you're also delivering really good customer service. Be grateful for every single product that you sell. Send a thank you note. Tell them how much you appreciate that sell. Um, and then if you get any messages 
be super courteous, be very professional. Use what you learned in high school or college about writing techniques. You want to sound professional, you want to sound uh, legit. And this helps ensure customer trust so that you can, uh, again, get more sales. Because if customers trust you, they understand that you're a real nice person that cares about them, they'll be more likely to buy from you. So be number one in customer service. And sometimes it can be hard. Sometimes that you'll get those customers that really push your buttons or they're just straight up rude. Uh, in circumstances like that, it's you just gotta take a deep breath and reply the kindest, most nicest way that you can ever be. Uh, whenever I've done this, I've never had problems. I've always had customers that usually calm down and fizzle down and uh, everything goes smoothly. So just make sure you're taking care of your customer. Even if you need to take a little bit of a hit and refund their item, um, it's worth it to get that, get the five star review and to establish trust in them. So. Okay, so tip number six is a little bit interesting, um, and that is to be super clear on your shop's policies. So I've had to learn a little bit of the hard way because I didn't have my shop policies set up super clear. Um, so for example, I would sell, and I do, I still sell to um, other nations. I sell internationally. I've had people take advantage because I didn't spell out clearly that I am not responsible for the income taxes, the duty taxes, um, all those type of taxes that these other countries deal with. Um, and so I've had some negative experiences and negative customers because they weren't anticipating to pay those. Um, it's kind of silly, but that's just kind of one little example of what you need to protect yourself because you don't want to be taken advantage of. And I think in most cases, people are pretty nice, but there are some that that will try and, and kind of cheat the system a little bit. So just make sure you protect yourself and set up clear shipping policies, exchange policies, and international policies, anything like that that you're going to deal with. And then kind of to go along with your policies is when you set up your listing, you're gonna set up when the customer will receive this item. If it's a digital download, you can just skip over this part. But a, a physical download, you uh, usually say that you're gonna ship it within a certain amount of time. So um, one business day, one to two business days, one to three business days, two weeks, whatever it ends up being for your particular product. Um, you'll wanna make sure that you definitely ship by what you say that you will. Um, and if anything, ship maybe a day or two early if you can swing it because that will uh, show the customer that you're willing to over deliver for them, um, which again, will ensure trust so that you can get more sales and repeat customers. Okay, so in recap, number one is to have 20 or more listings. Number two is to make your shop look pretty, have really good listing photos. Number three, have competitive pricing. Price something similar to what other sellers are doing. Make sure you're not too low or too high. Number four is to have five star feedback. That's really crucial. You wanna establish trust in your shop. Number five is to be number one in customer service. Take care of your customers. Make them happy, they'll be happy, and then they will return. And number six is to be really clear on your shop policies. This is to protect you. Thank you so much for watching. I love selling on Etsy, and so I hope these tips can help you to get more sales. Please like and subscribe, and um, if you have any other questions or want more information about Etsy, I will be putting up more videos soon. And also go visit my website, www.athomepixels.com. I have quite a few Etsy posts on there that can help you succeed on Etsy. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.